So Alex is joining us this morning as our meeting sponsor. Uh, she is with Prosper Insurance. She's the business development executive. Uh, so she's somebody that uh, I work with a good bit and have referred many customers to. She is sponsoring today's training and some future trainings to help promote war and education and uh, all of us developing our professional skills and status. So Alex, why don't you give yourself a little shout out and tell us about yourself and Prosper. Good morning, everybody. I'm Alex with Prosper Insurance. We are a, an independent agency or a broker rather, uh, headquartered out of Virginia Beach. We are all about educating and guiding our clients so they can feel good about their insurance. Right now, Prosper is giving a meal away uh, for every quote that comes into the agency. We are well over a thousand meals uh, between here mm -hmm. and Richmond. Um, Prosper also, we represent over 30 companies, so we do the shopping for you. And we would love the opportunity to quote your insurance. Thank you. Very good. Thanks, Alex. Sure. Oh, Rita, for those of us who are here and ready, let's get rolling. So if you want to hit record and uh, we'll get started. We are, we are there. Thank you. Sure, absolutely. Well, thanks for joining us today. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am Kevin Anazuk. Uh, I am a local mortgage guy here, member of WAR, and love to help out with some of the training classes. Uh, we do a Finance 101. That's kind of how I got started with WAR. But we're doing a lot of other business development type classes, such as the one today, 10 Secrets to Creating Your Brand's Facebook Presence for More Referrals. And why am I qualified to teach this to realtors? Well, because we're really doing the same things. You know, when it comes to business development, lead generation, finding clients, we are all out there looking for those exact same home buyers. In my case, sure, we do look for some folks that want to refinance as well, but my priority is now and always has been home buyers, working with agents, helping them build their business, looking for buyers myself to get pre-approved and send over. So when it comes to marketing, social media marketing, we have the exact same job. And most of what we cover today counts for everyone, not even just folks in real estate, folks selling insurance, folks selling cars, folks selling Mary Kay. Uh, this is really just solid information on building your Facebook brand and making sure that you're presenting the right image and getting the branded image out there to as many people as possible. We all know Facebook can be one of the biggest time vampires on earth. Social media in general. It is so easy to get caught up in Facebook for hours and usage is up right now with the COVID-19 pandemic, 30, 40% I've heard. Uh, so it's a great opportunity now more than ever to reach out and to connect to folks when they have nothing else to do. So they're on social media a lot and putting that right message out there now is more important than ever. We covered that on our recent realtor surviving the COVID-19 pandemic class that being that positive message is not only always important, but right now it's absolutely critical to keeping yourself going keeping yourself busy right now and building for the rest of 2020 and beyond. So a lot of folks are not using Facebook and social media the right way to truly build relationships with their current potential and past clients. You know, in general, people will use you again if they remember you. So we're going to talk about ways today to be remembered. People we know, like, and trust, would give us unlimited leads if they just remembered us. So that's really going to be the key of what we're doing with Facebook. My Facebook, eh, I really could care less about Facebook in general, but I keep it active, I keep it posted, and I only post things that fit into the purpose of my Facebook page. Honestly, if I'm just going to go scroll and mess around, I'll probably go on Instagram. You just scroll through, look at funny memes, funny pictures. I laugh and move on to the next thing. 
but today's focus is Facebook because I don't get business from Instagram very rarely, but I do get business from Facebook. And a lot of the folks who are more in our target market to purchase are on Facebook more than any other social media platform. Now, as we go through today, uh, we're going to talk about personal and business pages. So I have both. Um, but honestly, my business pages, I two or three of them, get very little traffic. Facebook, what we're going to talk about is more about connecting with people. We're going to build our business through connections, through friendships. So absolutely, you do need a business page. If you don't have Facebook now, we're going to start with the personal page. You need that. The business page is important, but not your primary focus. When you go through, you can like a business. Someone invites you to like their business. You can click like, but on your personal page, that person becomes your friend. And that's the feeling we want to cultivate. And really, do you see many business postings that come through your Facebook feed? Probably not. If you've liked a business, it's going to be rare you see anything unless they've paid to be in your Facebook's feed if they've sponsored being there or if someone has shared something from the business page over. Plus, your personal page already has an audience. You know, you may have a hundred friends, you may have a thousand friends. I think Facebook limits you at like 5,000 without becoming a, uh, a public figure, but you already have a base of people to work with there. Your business page, you have to invite people to like the page. It rarely shows in the news feed. And some people will like your business page and then just forget about it. Some people are never going to like your business page no matter what you do. So folks are less likely to going, be going on your, your business page. And there's pros and cons for both. And you can share information across both. You can put a post on one and share it to the other. That's been my experience at one of the most effective ways to cross pollinate between, between the two. Now, and as we go through this, feel free to hit my Facebook page. It's Kevin Onizuk, O-N-I-Z-U-K. Uh, and what we're going through today, hey, I'm not perfect. Doing this class uh, was a reminder of how important it is to be consistent, to do the things that we're going to talk about today. Uh, but even with not being engaged to the level that I should be recently, I'm still getting one to three deals per month from Facebook. And it's folks that who are my friends or folks who are referrals from people that are my friends. It's a very effective medium if you do it well. And honestly, um, a lot of my Facebook stuff was done by my assistant and I am between assistants right now. So that's partially why it's not getting as much attention as it used to. All right, so let's kind of start with this because we're talking about branding today. Like it or not, you have a brand and you have an online brand. Your brand is how folks see you, what they think of you, what they think of you as a realtor, what they think of you as a professional, what they think of you honestly as a person. Either you're controlling it, you're controlling your brand, or it's controlling you. Every day, we each only have a limited amount of time. We need to focus and block out time and for activities that bring us the biggest return. And if we think about Facebook, we need to make sure that we're not getting caught up in a time vampire. We're not getting lost, but doing what is important to build our business and keeping it client focused. This isn't about us. If we're talking about Facebook today, we're talking about Facebook to build your brand and build your business. And let's all be honest with ourselves. Facebook is narcissistic. Folks care more about themselves. Posting selfies, here I am, here's what I'm doing, here's what I ate today. They want to post something and get as many likes and shares as possible. That's what's exciting to folks. Every time you see a post with lots of likes and shares, it makes you feel good. You get a little dopamine hit in the brain. So all of this is going to be about them, not about us. It's going to be promoting that image that clients 
will feel connected, feel a friendship and a kinship to us. And as we go through this too, keep in mind, as we're doing posts, most Facebook and social media interaction nowadays is on phones, mobile phones, cell phones. So use on mobile phones has surpassed anyone going on computers anymore on any social media. So we're going to make sure that the posts we post are cell phone friendly and we want to keep them personal. We don't do any services, any automation that are just going to post a lot of junk for us. So as we make our social media plans, remember these three important key things, which we discussed a lot of it. Your marketing needs to be less about you and more about your clients, focusing on your clients. You need to humanize your image and brand and make it accessible through mobile. We are connecting. The whole point of this is connections. And whenever possible, look to automation as a way to help save time while increasing the effectiveness of your efforts. Automation is helpful, but we don't want to just put bland stuff, sign up for a service that will post, you know, random stuff about real estate to our, our pages and, and have really no true connection to who we are. Okay, I love this quote. Doing what you love is where happiness lives. What's your passion? That's got to show through in your social media presence. It also counts in, are you actually going to do it? You'll do what you love. If you enjoy social media, you enjoy being on Facebook, you're more likely to do it. I talk to folks all the time who are trying to develop their business, whether it's loan officers, realtors, or whatever. You know, what, what is the magic thing to do in marketing? The magic thing to do in marketing is doing what you'll actually do. So if it's something that may be effective, but you don't like doing it, like if you don't like cold calling people, even if it is effective, you're not going to do it. So it's not going to happen. So you need to do what you like to do. If you don't like social media, get someone else to do it for you. If you don't love it, hire someone. As I mentioned earlier, I had an assistant who did all my social media posts. So uh, I would do the personal things. Like I posted something about the family, but they had specific plans of what was supposed to be posted and when, and they took care of it for me. They did a lot of my social media presence. They even did a lot of the comments, a lot of the shares. You know, so having someone to help you out can be a very wise investment. And on the flip side about what you love, share what you love with other people and post about it. That connects you to people. It connects you to people like you. And it helps folks decide if you're a fit for them. You know what? When folks are dating nowadays, the first thing they do is they go to social media and check out that person. It works the same way in business. If someone is considering hiring you as your, as their buyer's agent or their listing agent, guess what? They're probably hitting social media, checking you out and seeing what you're all about and have probably made a pretty good first impression and decision about you before you ever even show up to talk to them. So share what you love with about other people, connect with people like you, and it helps them decide if you're a fit for them. Friends like to work with friends, people like to work with real people, and people that they can find a mutual connection with. There are some apps that are available to help time, you, uh, help save time, you see that in the browser plugins down there. Uh, you can Google some of these where, you know, if you're looking for content, you come across something, uh, you can save it quickly to Z or Flipboard. And then when you are on Facebook, when you're ready to do some posts, you have it all there. You don't have to think about it. So that's just a little quick side note that there are some tools to make it easier as you go. So how do I find my purpose in social media? Is your purpose self-serving? If you look at your page, what do you see? Are you being obvious? Like, are you obviously trying to get a new listing or a buyer in your post as you scroll through? Sit down and scroll through your page and think about if you were someone 
checking you out as a real estate agent, or if I was a friend of a friend of social media and I came across your page, what would I think? People don't want to be sold. So is it a, in what you're posting, are you posting to connect and get to people know you, or are you trying to sell them? Are you keeping your pictures and posts private? If you're trying to connect with someone, post the real you publicly so the public can see it. And the more folks you connect with, the more folks that truly see you, the better connections you will have, the better connections will be created. And keep it visual. Visual contact is king. Let the visuals tell your story because we process visuals way better than text. When we're scrolling through on our phone, we get caught by a picture, something that grabs our attention. If it's a bunch of text, you're probably just gonna keep scrolling. But think about it. Like I know me personally, even if I go out to eat, if I go to a restaurant I haven't been to before or it's something I'm not familiar with, I wanna see a picture. Like I wanna see pictures on a menu. Even if I get Chinese takeout, if I don't see a picture, a lot of times I'll Google it to make sure that I'm getting the, the right thing or something I want, see how it looks. Even more so, if I'm sitting at a restaurant, like, ah, I'll take, I'll, you know, I'll take the cheeseburger, and then someone walks by, and it's an amazing looking, I don't know, lasagna, like, oh my goodness, no, 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 I want what she's having. So a visual is really the key at grabbing attention and making sure that you are connecting in pictures, not just words. Even texts that often I'll just send a text as a picture. Use GIFs, so the little like, uh, if those of you who don't know who GIFs are, you know, uh, just like the little like clips of, uh, of like cartoons and funny things. All of those have more of an impact than just words and you can have fun with it. Make your pictures fun and funny. Make your GIFs fun and funny. Make folks laugh. It is so much fun being in sales being a true salesperson, we love the thrill of the chase. We love selling, we love going out, we love closing that deal. We even love posting about every time we close a deal. More than any other industry, we in real estate love to self-promote and say, hey, I closed this today, look at me, here's how great I am, I sold another house. We love that, but at the end of the day, this needs to be as much about creating relationships more so than chasing leads. If you think about it, and think about your business, but in general, about 75% of a real estate agent's business comes from referrals and word of mouth, but we love spending money on the shiny object over there, the new and exciting lead source, rather than investing in our past clients. The database we have is the most valuable thing, especially those of us who have been in business for a while. So before you spend any money on new leads, that's a shot in the dark, a hope, nothing is as effective as investing in our past clients and working our database. Uh, we had a class about that at war and we saw clearly that for a, a agent that effectively works their database, they can get one to three referrals per month per 100 people in their database. Now that's not just social media, that's gonna involve some phone calls, some check-ins, some birthday texts or phone calls, maybe even some mailings, but it is the most impactful investment of your time and Facebook is a way to connect in a non-salesy type manner. And on average in the United States, the agents spend about $320 a month on leads just from Zillow. So, you know, a lot of us don't spend any, some of us spend thousands of dollars a month, but the conversion rate on those is fairly slow. So if we're gonna spend marketing dollars, if we're good at Zillow, if we're good at follow-ups, that's awesome. But this social media is a way to connect with folks that already know, like, and trust you and are more likely to send you a future client, one of their friends and family. As we talk about our purpose, we're going to talk. We're, we have to keep in mind our professional image. First impressions are the key. So when I go to your Facebook page, 
what is my first impression of you as a person? As a realtor and as a business person, that's important, but I want to know who that person is. People do business with people, especially in our business, and you're going to spend time with that person, working with them on their listing, working with them as a buyer, taking them out and showing, showing homes. So people want to work with someone who they feel comfortable with. That's a real person, but it's also a professional. If you're posting and always holding a beer, always partying, what image are you showing? If you like to party, that's fine. But as a business professional, keep it off social media. Or if you really have to put it on social media, put it on Instagram. That's probably a, a, a better source for stuff like that. Younger realtors I see are often guilty of that. I have lots of realtor friends I try to connect with and uh, friend request as many realtors as I can, obviously, given I'm a mortgage guy. Uh, and I, some of the things I see realtors post, again, primarily younger realtors, are absolutely horrific. Uh, there was one recently that posted about a Tinder hookup that came over to their house and long story short, highly inappropriate. And if I looked at that on a realtor page, I was like, there's no way this person is coming into my house and helping me make the most important decision of my life. Other realtors are showing sexy selfies, doing things at the gym, partying. That's not the professional image. You want to be personal. You want to show the real you, but also in a professional manner. And as you go through social media, we want to be mobile and responsive. So keep your phone on you. When folks comment on your post, when folks interact, react. Boost your Facebook posts. And we'll talk about that. You want to boost what's working. Utilize browser plugins. There's tools out there to help you be more effective in your Facebook, in connecting and getting more engagement on your page. Use Facebook to connect with previous, current, and new clients. There's nothing more important than connecting with people that you're already working with. Those are the people that know, like, and trust you. Those are the people that are most likely to refer you or to come back to you in the future. This keeps your past clients engaged with you, so when they are ready to sell or buy again in the future, they remember you, they come back to you. Every time I talk to a prospective customer, whether they apply or not, I'm looking them up on Facebook. I'm digging, I'm trying to find them. And if it's John Smith, it may take a little bit of digging to find the right John Smith. Uh, luckily, uh, in, the, in the mortgage side, I typically know their date of birth. I typically know where they work. So when I find 15 John Smiths, I can dig through and find out a little bit more information about where that John Smith works, et cetera. So, Try to learn about new prospects. You'll definitely learn about your current clients as you work with them, connect with them, friend request them, and be interactive. Maintain a consistent flow of communication. You have to be active on Facebook. You can't just set up a page and leave it alone. You have to post, you have to like and comment, you have to engage with others. And we talked about creating and maintaining your professional image. Okay, let's talk about some secrets for Facebook engagement success, because that's really key. Facebook is pointless if folks aren't seeing your page. If they're not seeing your posts, if they're not visiting your page, if you're not posting something engaging and memorable, then you're not memorable. Quotes are one of the best ways to like and share your posts. As this says, a surefire recipe for engagement is to combine a great quote with a cool image. We talked about the importance of visuals. So your visual can even be a quote like this. Home is not a place. It's a feeling. People love inspirational quotes. Why? Because lots of folks just aren't happy, especially right now. The COVID-19 mess, there's a lot of folks that aren't working or are struggling financially or they're just quarantined and they miss people. They're longing for interactions. They're longing for a better day. So right now, being that ray of sunshine is huge.
for reaching out and connecting with people. Posting things that are positive, uplifting, even humorous, people are attracted to that. They're attracted to inspiration and fun. Our surviving COVID-19 pandemic class for realtors focused on all of that, being the light. And it's not just right now. People always want to connect with people that are positive and fun and funny and professional and leaders. People gravitate towards that. And it can even be some, you know, some funny things. There's a loan officer in Richmond who has a page of just crazy funny memes. Some of them are even a bit inappropriate. Not really my style. I love to post funny things, but this is all just funny memes but then it just has him and he's a more easy loan officer. And I bet you he gets a ton of engagement and business out of it just because it's fun and it's funny. Where can you get stuff to, to post? Uh, you can go to Pinterest. If you're on Pinterest, just do inspirational quotes. You can go to Brandy Quote. You can go to Brandy Quote about real estate. You can just Google inspirational quotes or inspirational real estate quotes. There's tons of places to find stuff and putting stuff like that on your Facebook page gives you a positive professional image and folks will absolutely cling to that. Here's some examples. Uh, one is mine, two of our are from some of the others. Uh, the one on the bottom left is mine. I just posted a couple days ago. It's just one I grabbed. Life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you react to it. I got some great engagement, got some great likes, got some comments, and it's a positive message in this time while people are struggling. Hey, Kevin. Yes. One quick question. Are these slides going to be available to the uh, attendees after the class? Sure. Okay. That was one of the questions. And since, you know, you've had some good information on these slides, I wanted to. Yeah, great. Um, I'll just send them. Uh, either you can send me a list of, uh, of who attended and I can send them out or they can message me or email me um, and I can send it out. Yeah, happy to, okay. happy to share. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Yeah, cool. And in uh, looking at these inspirational quotes, also follow people who are doing it with success. If you find some, if you find that you're gravitated towards somebody, oh my gosh, I love so-and-so's Facebook page. I love going on there. They always post the best stuff. Follow those people who are doing it. Look at their page and do what they do, but do it with your own style. Uh, I heard this years ago. It's called the case theory. C-A-S-E -S -S -E stands for copy and steal everything. So if you know somebody that's doing an amazing job, you love what they're doing it, do that too. Uh, if they're not in your area, you can almost carbon copy it, but Honestly, you know, you want it to be you. It speaks to you. So take what they're doing, make it your own, and copy that. Copy and steal it. And interact and engage. When you post something like this, like you can see this one section here, the one post on the right, has lots of comments. When someone comments, comment back. Interact and engage. Reward folks for being active on your page. When somebody comments, like it, comment back, reply. We all know that if we comment on something and someone comments back, it makes us feel good. That, that's a connection. And right now people are missing that connection. So like and respond. Acknowledge the people who are engaging with you and they're more likely to engage in the future. And Facebook likes it too. When you make a post, when it has a lot of likes, when it has engagement and you engage back, guess what? Facebook is gonna promote it more. It's gonna keep it in more news feeds. If you post something and it gets like one like and no shares, it's not gonna get a lot of hype in the Facebook algorithms. If you post something and it goes crazy, guess what? Facebook is gonna keep it going because Facebook is in business to keep people on Facebook. The longer they're there, the more time they spend there, the more ads Facebook can put in front of you. And Facebook is always listening. We were out at the uh, Chippewa, I don't know, at the the uh, over on the in the Surrey area, the state park. There, we were talking, just chit chatting about, oh, we should have brought water shoes. We need to get water shoes. Well, within hours, in my feed, there was ads for water shoes. So your phone is always listening. So 
the more time Facebook can get you on there and keep you on there, the more they can advertise to you, the more money that they are going to make. So Facebook is gonna keep in your feed the things that they think you're gonna to wanna to see because other people wanna see it. Other people are liking it, commenting it, must be a good post, let's keep that going to keep more people on Facebook. So folks are more likely to be involved and engaged and Facebook is gonna help you out. And keeping in mind too, when you're out and about, engagement, look around in a restaurant. It's amazing. You'll see couples, you'll see families where they're sitting in the restaurant at the table and all of them are staring at their phones. People aren't communicating and interacting like they used to. People sit there and stare at their phones. Heck, kids sit there and text across the table and message across the table to each other. So being that positive message is exactly where you want to be. Next, let's talk about being you. As we talked about, we're trying to build connections. This is all about connections. Everything we're gonna talk about is about connecting with people. So use real life. Show who you are. I'm a real living, breathing, funny person. I'm a mom, I'm a dad, I'm just like you in this way or that way. You don't want to be uptight. You are a professional, but you can share things that are a glimpse into who you are for real. Or even more importantly, an open book into who you are for real. And you never know what's going to blow up. So just involve your real life. As you can see, here's a few things that I have posted. Uh, so I try to post about my family. So I don't typically do just selfies like, hey, look at Kevin. Here's what I'm doing right now. Uh, but I try to show pictures of my family doing things. And that's what people want to see. Like in this one spot here, there's some scenery and scenery is cool and all, but I don't just post scenery. People want to go in, people that know, like, and trust you, your friends, your family, they want to see you. Oh, look at Kevin. He's doing this. Oh, you know, he's, uh, you know, they, they want to see you. They want to see what's going on. So here's one, May 4th, where we went hiking in Coal Mountain. I posted that just to get some engagement and some connection of, hey, here's what they're up to. Uh, in our socially distant time frame. we're out hiking socially distanced and safely, but still living our life and having some fun. And some things that take off that I, I never really thought would, uh, in, when it comes to business posting, I try not to just post of, hey, I do mortgages, come get a mortgage. I try to do fun things that aren't salesy, but let folks know that, hey, I still do mortgages. So towards the bottom right there was a post I did, what's that, on March 13th when the whole COVID-19 mess started, the whole toilet paper shortage started. Uh, just jokingly, I put free roll of toilet paper with all new applications. Let us, help, uh, let us help you wipe out your rent payment and roll you into a new home. That post went crazy. I got 120. Uh, you know, likes, et cetera, 37 comments. I got eight shares. So that's something that I'm not saying, hey, you know, come get a mortgage directly. It's more in a fun way, but it got a ton of traction. I'll also do other current event things. Uh, towards the left there, uh, those of us who have been quarantined with Netflix, Tiger King was the number one show on Netflix. So I did this fun post. If this guy can own over 200 tigers and run for governor, you can own a home. Get started at loanswithkevin.com. And it was just like a goofy Tiger King picture. So if you're gonna go out and promote your business and sell, do it in a way that's fun and funny and people will appreciate. And I don't know if I should admit this, uh, but even when I got engaged and uh, married to that lovely lady there, I planned all of it on Facebook. So we got married and it was, we didn't really tell anybody it was a small deal, uh, but I did not put anything out there publicly until I wanted it and had a plan for engagement and interaction on my Facebook. My purpose on Facebook is to engage, my purpose is to reach, and my purpose is to develop my business. 
Now, it may not always look like that because I want people to engage with me and connect with me personally, but even the personal things I post have a purpose. So I posted, it was weeks later when I wanted traction on my Facebook page. I posted on dates and times where I knew it would get the most traction because I knew that would blow up my page. So keep your Facebook purposed. If you're not active on Facebook now, start with your personal page before building out your business page. They're both important, but build you, build your person before building the business. Next section we're gonna talk about is stories. Be the Superman or Superwoman. Get the stop, look, and listen to your post for better engagement. You can post videos. This person here, Amy, posted a short video and put on a significant detailed blog, we'll call it, explaining the video and connecting with folks. She's telling a story. She's telling a positive story about how she helped someone in real estate. So you're not necessarily saying, hey, let me list your home, but you're telling a positive story of how you helped someone, how you connected with someone. She's promoting herself without promoting herself. You can do the same. So tell your story. This shouldn't be the main thing that you're always doing because then it will start to sell, sound, sound salesy, but what we are doing every day in our social media is ultimately, it's our PR campaign. It's building our brand, who we are, and how people see us. And if people see us as helpful in helping others, being their advocate, they'll reach out to us. Whether they're ready to buy or sell, just need some advice. Those folks who call, who reach out for just questions and advice, guess what? They're going to be the buyer or seller of tomorrow. This story is actually made up. I uh, just kind of made this example up to show that what you post doesn't always have to be fun and funny. It can be real life. It can even have challenges, but overall a positive message. As you can see at the end, this finished with, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to be the kind of real estate agent that I like to be. Here's a story that tells about an experience it tells about some challenges. It's not all happy and funny, but it gives a glimpse of who you are as an agent and that you are there to be real. Success stories, this is our favorite thing. As I said earlier, we love to self-promote. Every time we have a closing, every time we go on a listing, we love to sell, we love to self-promote. So this here says the 80-20 rule. I use the 80-20 rule because that's very commonly known, the 80-20 rule. So 80% of what you post should be feel-good stuff, motivational stuff, the quotes, the stuff about your family, things that empower your friends, um, empower your connections, and 20% about business. But done in that feel-good way that's super powerful to get friends to see you as the leader, as the professional, and somebody that they want to do business with. It's about how you make them feel. And 20% might even be a lot. You know, maybe that should be 10%. Like I said, you're building engagement and connections. They're going to know you're a real estate agent. You know, if you post 10 things about you and quotes and make them feel awesome, guess what? They're going to see in your explanation, your about section, that you're a realtor or they're gonna see that one post out of 10 that is a connection to your business and what you do and clients that you've helped. So when you do post business, keep it limited. Anything business related should be done in a cool way where folks see you as connected, as friends, as a leader, as a positive force in the community and helping others. You know, a couple of the posts that I put on there from closings, I just copied off my page, uh, you can see we're having fun. We're all hugging on each other. We're excited. We're having fun. We're connected. Uh, here's another uh, one down here that I pulled from my page where we're at closing. We're casual. We're fun. We're smiles. You know, it's, it's people that are connected. That's Brent Wooten back there in the hat. 
Uh, here's a cool post from Mike Rogan that he recently had that, that I liked uh, that was very timely about a social distancing closing. So way to go, Wendy Walker team, another one safely sold, realtors outside, clients inside. So that's a connection we're saying, hey, great job, somebody on my team that promotes his team, it promotes Wendy Walker, but also lets folks know that, hey, we're still in business right now. So think about the purpose, think about the message. When you post something like that, you're giving a positive shout out, but the real message behind Mike's post there is, guess what? We're still open for business. If you wanna buy or sell a house, we're still here, we're still active, you come see us. You come see the Wendy Walker team. So within real estate, self-promote, do it to a limited mass measure, but understand the message that you're giving. So any business post that I post, like stuff like this, generally has some of the least engagement. Stuff that is informative, like about interest rates or what the market's doing has, you know, I'll spend all kinds of time doing an informative video and nobody watches it. Nobody posts it, nobody shares it. You know, I'll still do it just to provide the information and keep it active but that stuff really gets the least traction on anyone's page. So just post enough that folks know what you do. They know you do it well. They know you help others. They know that you're a professional. But more than anything, if you want stuff like this, get your clients to post and share it. And you like and comment. So when you're at closing, take pictures and text it to the client and say, hey, feel free to share this on social media feel free to share this on Facebook. I don't have a ton of these because I do exactly that. When I'm working with a client and they're super happy and we're closing, I'll take pictures and I just send it to them and say, hey, you know, hey Mary, why don't you uh, hear some pictures from closing? It was great working with you. Feel free to share this on social media. And honestly, like at least 50% of them actually do it because they are super excited. I just bought a house and oh my goodness, uh, my realtor or my loan person took pictures that I can now share. So guess what? They're going to share it. So they're promoting you. It's not self-promoting and they're promoting you to their friends, their family members. It's not just your sphere. You're expanding your sphere. So when it comes to things like that, that's almost my preferred way to do it. Get your clients to post and share. Then you interact, reward your client with your engagement, hey, it was great knowing you, building, you know, say thank you, solidifying that friendship and relationship, but everybody they know is going to see that. They're gonna see that you as their agent are personal, you are related to them, you cared, you saw them through the process, you are friends with them, you are connected, and they're going to get the warm and fuzzies about that. They're gonna see it. And then engage with their friends when, when their friends post on it. Just even if you just like it, that's gonna be huge. But even over and above that, if it's somebody you converse with a little bit on their page, friend request them. You know, the more people you have in your online social media database, the more people who see your posts, the more people that connect with you, the more opportunities you have for a future client. So connect with your past clients, your current clients, other agents, connect with their friends, like their stuff, do friend requests. The more engagement you can have, the wider net you cast, the more people are gonna see that you're a positive real estate agent. Okay, another way to get engagement, and this is all about connections and engagement, and the more engagement you have on Facebook, the more Facebook is going to like your page and profile and promote it and share it. A great way to connect with folks is asking questions and make them interesting. If you're not sure what to ask, Google ideas. If I'm ever not sure about something, I just take Google. So you can, and there's almost everything you can internet search. So, you know, just Google, what are Facebook questions I can ask to boost engagement? Uh, and, but you know, you also want to keep things personal. Like I was at a gas station one time and I looked down and saw my shoes and I don't know the, the, it, it just struck me as funny the way everything looks. So I shot a picture of it, put it on Facebook and said, hey, caption this. 
and I got like 87 comments on it. Uh, it was just a ton of interaction. So put up a random fun picture, ask for captions, ask for quotes, ask for recommendations. It doesn't have to have anything to do with anything, but people want to be involved. They'll hop in just because they say, oh, huh, 43 people have already commented on this. This must be interesting. And the more folks that engage, the more folks will want to be a part of it. And the Facebook algorithms will keep it in the feeds. So no sales triggers. The question shouldn't be, hey, do you want to buy a house this year? No call to action. Just build engagements through the stuff that's fun and funny and interesting. Or, hey, you know, uh, I'm thinking about going to such and such a restaurant. Anybody know anything about it? I'm thinking about buying this or doing that. Anybody have any information that they can provide or recommendations? Anything that you can do to get people engaged with, liking and commenting on your page, build your page, build your Facebook brand. Let's see. We, uh, that's just an example of a Facebook question. Uh, here's one from Jessica Peterson, Confession Time. Who here has seen an ad on Facebook and bought something? I was at an event and a woman says, I love your jacket. I proceeded to say thank you and inform her I found it on Facebook. Then I compliment her and she says thank you and that she bought it from a Facebook ad as well. So that's just a, an example of something where, hey, have you ever bought anything on Facebook? So it's really not important what you ask as long as it's just something that will be interesting and get some comments. Next. Timing. So Facebook timing and when you post something does impact the post performance. And remember, that's our goal. You know, people will sometimes go to our page, but more often than not, most of your engagement is going to come from it being in their newsfeed. So when you post is important. Most days after 3 p.m. posts get more engagement. Folks are online on Facebook in the afternoons and evenings more than any other time of the day, and you get more engagement on Sunday and Monday. And as it says on here, the more you post, the better. The best posting frequency from marketing studies is five times a day. And that's a lot, but a page which posts every day, even just once a day, will be way more effective than, than pages that do not. Now the content has to be interesting, current, engagement, engaging. If you're just posting junk, nobody wants to know, then guess what? You know, you're not gonna get engagement. People are gonna unfollow you. They're not gonna be interested. Uh, one example, the page Positive Inspirational Quotes, they post several times a day, just positive inspirational quotes, and they get tons of traction. Another cool statistic, uh, MailChimp, uh, they, they do a lot of marketing for folks in all industries. They did a survey and found out the, the highest opt-out rate for email. So people that, you know, that you put on email follow-ups, the highest opt-out opt -out rates were folks where emails were sent less frequently. So the opt-out rates for daily emails, if you email somebody every day, when people opt out of your, your emails for solicitations, they were less likely to opt out than if you just sent one email every six months. So don't feel like you're overwhelming folks. And think about your Facebook feed. I bet you, you have some friends that post a lot, they're in your feed a lot, but you love what they post. So if you're posting quality and folks like and engage with it, you're going to be way better, way farther ahead on Facebook than most others. And be cautious, we talked about opt-outs, of what you post. On Facebook and social media, that's really getting unfriended or unfollowed. So sure, if you post junk that's boring and not very interesting, etc., you know, people aren't really going to pay attention. They're not going to engage, so it's not going to show up in feeds. It's not going to be in the Facebook algorithms. But if it's, you know, constantly junk, people are going to just unfollow you, so you never follow up on their feeds. But what's really bad is don't post anything negative or political. People don't go to social media to feel bad. They want good feelings. Uh, they want 
the positives. They want the fun and the funny. They want the connections. In the presence of something good, the brain has four main feel-good chemicals. You have endorphins, oxytocin, serotonin, and dopamine. Facebook, social media, they boost dopamine. Dopamine is the habit former. It's an incredible tool when used appropriately. That's why Facebook and social media is so addicting, especially those of us with ADD, ADHD, going through, seeing a post, seeing something funny, especially when people like our posts, comment on our posts. It's a little burst of dopamine, it's a feel good, and it's addicting, and that's why people are on Facebook for hours every day. So boost that, give them that little hit of dopamine, give them that little bit of feel good, whether it's the inspirational quote, a funny post, somebody you know and like seeing you enjoying your life with your family, that's what to do. The political stuff, avoid the temptation to post about politics. It immediately alienates half of your audience. Don't even comment on them. On them. Uh, whether or not all of you know, I used to be an elected official here in town, but I kept that off my social media as much as possible, definitely in any way that could be controversial. You know, maybe if I was doing something fun in the community, but outside of that, I didn't want any of that mess in my social media. People already hear about negative stuff enough in real life. Just watch the news. There's tons of bad news out there. Facebook's not real life. Facebook is the message you want to send. So don't send a negative message. Keep it positive. Keep it about what folks are going to want to see and the image and the brand you want to create. Another great way to get engagement is current events. Try posting something not about just look at me, more about, hey, come check this out. Talk about what's happening in the area. Give recommendations. Hey, check this out. Uh, the Taste of Williamsburg is this weekend. Uh, who's going? And so that is kind of a double whammy. Here's something fun that's happening. Who else is going to be there? So it's a question. You'll get some engagement. And you may even find some people you know going, and you have that in-person connection. You're not sure what's going on? Hit Yelp. Hit Facebook events. You can find out what's going on. There's always events being posted. Maybe not so much right now, but you can post other things. Here's two great examples. The one on the left, uh, Bobby Jankovic, uh, he posted on April 26. At what point would you travel to a destination for business or pleasure? Do lower prices tempt you? So he's asking questions, encouraging interactions. It's a current event type thing. He's showing airfares that are available right now. Folks are craving getting out craving engaging with other people, going someplace besides their house. So that was a really awesome way to connect. And he got 67 comments, 67 people commented on it. That's a, that's a great response to just a random post. On the right, Greg Hatcher. He's given a shout out to a local business. So he's showing that Rocco Smokehouse Grill, that, hey, they're open for business. Uh, they're doing takeout and delivery, he's showing some pictures basically giving a recommendation. So in this age of COVID-19 and quarantine, your current events can just be a little bit different. And in a couple weeks, you know, maybe we will have some, some events that we can go out and enjoy again. GIFs, we talked about this. GIFs, GIFs, I'm not even exactly sure how to pronounce it. I'm sure my kids know. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, I guess I'm old when it, uh, when it comes to stuff like that. But there are those little like graphics, soundless graphics that automatically play on a loop, you know, a few seconds, you know, uh, maybe 10, 20 seconds at most. It's funny stuff. It's a dog doing something funny. It's a cartoon. It's a clip from your favorite TV show. Uh, you can post that on your page, but more often I use that as comments. So when you're commenting on something, the GIFs get a lot of attention. People laugh, you're being funny, you're being personal. 
Facebook offers a lot of them. If you just get, when you go to comment, you get a selection of them from one of the options there. If you don't like anything there, go to jiffy.com. There's a ton of stuff on there. Anything you can think of. Clips from any show you've ever seen, dogs, cats, doing anything you want them to do. It's a lot of funny stuff on there. So take a minute, think about the post, think about the comment, what would be fun and funny. You don't even have to use words. Just add a picture. You can just text a gif, text a picture. You don't need to use words. A lot of times a picture, something fun and funny, you can post on social media, text, even emails, speaks way louder. You can link Facebook to other things that you do. If you have a personal website, I'm sure you have a business website, but you have personal stuff, such as blogs. So say you have a hobby that you blog about. You like to make, I don't know, sugar scrubs. That's uh, one of the ones on here. So if you like to make sugar scrubs and you have a blog or a page about it or a Pinterest page or something of that nature, you can post from your Pinterest page to your Facebook page or even if it's not yours, take a cool craft or a recipe and pull it from Pinterest. Post the link and put it on your Facebook page. Facebook algorithms love the links. So it promotes your page, it promotes your post if it's linked to something else. So in this example, in our home, we have a tradition where we wrap up a book every night and read it till Christmas. Some of us, so share some of your family traditions with us and then see other ideas at this Pinterest link. That's a great post. So it's asking to share some of your family traditions. It's giving you some ideas and a link to go get other information. Facebook loves stuff like that. People love stuff like that. All right, we're on the home stretch here. Uh, so we're not going to be too much longer, but now we're getting into the meat and potatoes and these last four slides. And the last slide is just how to contact me. So really we got you know, about three, but three or so that we're covering. All right, so first, number one, we're gonna put budget behind the right comment. These are our 10 secrets. Put budget behind the right content. So don't just post and promote things that aren't going to be interesting. And you don't always know what that's gonna be. So wait until your post gets some engagement. So if you've posted something and you say, hey, this is getting a lot of traction, I'm getting a bunch of comments, I'm getting a bunch of likes, getting a lot of people interested, then put your money behind it. Facebook is cheap. Uh, Zillow and other things are expensive. Facebook advertising is cheap and you can reach a ton of people very easily. Now, generally, your paid engagement is gonna be on your business page. So cross post your content and boost what gets interest on either page or both pages. So if you put something on your personal page and it's getting a ton of traction and interest, either share it to your business page or put the same post on your business page, just duplicate it and then promote it uh, from your business page. Now, Facebook is tough on advertising right now for paid advertising. So especially those of us in real estate, uh, you are very, I guess, overwatched on what we can post to make sure that we are not inappropriately targeting potential buyers for housing. Uh, so follow your Facebook advertising rules for folks in real estate, but it's a great way to get in people's feeds for things that are being successful. Number two, put the most ad spend behind the content, the content that can impact your bottom line. So our Facebook page, we talked about making it personal, making it about us, but if you're gonna be spending money, do it on something that actually can make you money. If you posted a great recipe that people like, I probably wouldn't spend money on boosting that. It's great if more people get to enjoy your recipe, but if you're gonna be spending money, if you've already built your personal Facebook profile, if you've already built your brand and your persona, then you can boost a listing. You can boost an open house. You can offer coupons, discounts, whatever it may be. Number three, test a variety of Facebook content. And not just test, but use a variety of Facebook content. Don't always post the same kind of stuff, it'll be boring. 
So use a variety of status updates, photos, videos, links, monitor the performance, keep doing a variety, but then whatever works best for you and your audience, focus on that, do more of that. Number four, avoid calls to action, such as like this page, share this with your friends. Guess what, Facebook doesn't like that. Facebook knows what you're trying to do and they consider this like baiting and they may penalize your post. Yes, some posts get more attraction than others. Facebook will decide whether or not your post is in lots of news feeds or not a lot of news feeds. So if that's something you're going for, try to ask other questions without saying share or something obvious. So maybe just ask a question like, hey, do you like this? Or something that I do from time to time, if it's a post that I really like and I'm excited about and it's not getting a lot of traction, I'll private message friends and ask them to share it. So folks that are you know, in the industry, fellow realtors or just friends or whomever, and it's not always the same people, I don't always want the same people sharing, I'll just private message them and say, hey, you know, I posted this, this, uh, this cool picture, would you mind sharing it on your wall? Uh, just trying to get some attention or, you know, I, you know, I, I think folks will really like it. And you know what? Not everybody's going to do it, but a lot of them will. And it gets you a lot of attention and it gets your post some traction you wouldn't have had otherwise. And if you know what, if they don't like it, they just won't do it. Number five, prioritize getting fans to share your content. We just talked about that again. goes without saying, consumers trust friends and, friends and family more than brands you're more likely to use someone that was referred to you other than the ad that came across your, your feed. So tag others in the pictures to grab attention of them and their friends. So if you have a picture from closing that you post, hopefully your friends with them on Facebook, tag them all, tag them as individuals. If you're doing anything that you think may be of interest to any particular people, tag them, tag them in a picture, put them in comments. The more you can get folks to engage with your page, even if you're saying, hey, Bob, uh, you know, uh, what do you think of this in comments? And you do it where it notifies them, you're probably gonna get them engaged. Number six, businesses can now tag brands in their posts for wider reach. Use this to your advantage by running partner campaigns. So partner with other businesses, partner with folks that are like businesses or folks that may have a need, who their clients may have a need for your services. Promote that business, put things on your page. Uh, with this COVID-19 stuff, we've been promoting local business. We're giving away every week a $100 gift card to a local business, just to whoever likes, comments, and engages on our business page uh, just to help promote that local business but also show that, hey, we're engaged, we care about the community, but you know what also happens? That local business takes my post and posts it on their page and the business owner shares it with their friends and family. So that's the traction that we're getting out of that. $100 gift card is a small investment for that much influence, that much reach. Number seven, work closely with influencers. When influential celebrities and thought leaders with big Facebook fan bases share your posts, you'll win and reach more engagement. And it doesn't have to be a true celebrity. A Facebook celebrity isn't necessarily a real life celebrity. It's just people you know who are active on Facebook. They have a lot of friends. They have a lot of followers. They have a lot of posts. They get a lot of interactions. Be active with them. Post and comment on their stuff. That gives them that positive feeling it gets engagement and they'll engage back. Even note their names when you post something. You know, just anything you can do to get them engaged in what you post can help you because they're social media influencers. And when they post, when they share, it's gonna get a lot of attention. Number eight, we talked about this. Don't underestimate the value of sharing links. The more you post and share, other posts and links, the more traction you get from the Facebook al algorithms, the more likely you are to get your story bumped or reintroduced into news feeds at a later time. Number nine, geotargeting for posts relevant to a specific region. 
Geotargeting is really cool. Uh, I've just started using this in my business. So you can take a post that you want to promote or an advertisement and geotarget, which basically means target it geographically. So some of the things that I'm doing is uh, doing some targeting to home buyers in certain spots. And it can be as, you know, as big of a, you know, a, a spot as a few feet. So you can get very specific. So if there is a, say you're offering a promotion to healthcare workers, you could geo-target Centera Hospital. You could target the back door practically where employees go in and out. So everybody that walks through that spot with their cell phone is going to get your ad. So if you wanted to target Centera, Riverside, as a, and you have an offer specific to healthcare workers, you can have it set up that everybody that goes in and out of there is going to get your ad in their social media feed. If they don't go in and out of there, they're not going to get your ad. They have to step into that zone. Once they step into that zone, they're targeted. So they don't have to stay in there. It's not only while they're there, they're on your list and it'll continue to go after them. It's a really cool way to do some specific advertising and offers to folks that are in a specific geographic region. Number 10, talk back to Facebook fans. Hugely important. It's a simple tactic that too many folks ignore. Folks post, then they watch. When I post something, when all of us post something, we go back and check our posts. We want to see how many people liked it, how many people commented. We're going to look at who liked and commented. We all do. Facebook is narcissistic. We think we're hilarious. Oh my gosh, this is so fun and funny. Uh, I, you know, uh, I'm going to post it and I want everybody else to think it's fun and funny. Or, oh my gosh, my kids look so adorable. I'm going to post this cutest picture of my kids or the cutest picture of my cat or dog. People love their pets. They post a cute picture of their cat doing something funny or a short video, and it gets tons of likes and comments. They're gonna be all about that, and it engages them to you. You posting something has less impact than you commenting on something or interacting with something someone else posted. And again, we're building our business by building our brand and building interactions. All right, steps to take now. We're almost done. Number one, mark your calendar and spend time on Facebook. Not the time where you're just sitting there scrolling through and you know just being, being a, a time vampire, but set some time, make that your time you spend there. Make it your social media power hour. Pick a time, three to four o'clock every day, whatever works for you. Maybe it's first thing in the morning before the phones and emails and everything go crazy. Block out some time. It is important time to your social media strategy. If you don't have time to do that, hire somebody to do it. I am currently looking for a new assistant. Uh, maybe somebody here in my office. I may do a virtual assistant. You can get folks uh, that are in other countries that for five, six bucks an hour, it's a fortune to them. They can do your social media stuff for you. It's very efficient. It's a great wage, wage for them. You can get college graduates for five, six bucks an hour that it's a great wage and great living for them. Uh, so I think I'm adding a virtual assistant. I tried to get my, I have a daughter in college. She's desperate for money. I tried to get her to do my social media stuff. I was like, I'll teach you, just do it. I can't get her to do it. I can't even get her to get started. So if you're having trouble finding somebody locally that's affordable, and Facebook savvy and able to help out and can't find that, there's people out there that will help you. If you need information with a virtual assistant, uh, let me know. I can hook you up with people that can hook you up with somebody that's, that's awesome. Number two, friend every one of your past and current clients on Facebook, potential clients, prospects, other real estate agents, anyone and everyone that you know and meet, friend them on Facebook. Again, 
we're not here today to talk about, oh, you know, Facebook, it's not my, it's, you know, I only want it to be my real friends. Uh, I don't want people to know my business. Well, guess what? No, today is about everybody knowing your business so you can build your business and creating that message that's correct. Yeah, you don't need everybody to know all of your business. You want them to know the business about you that you want them to know. Number three, critically important, like and comment on post daily. I know we've talked about this, but this is something you have to do. Nothing crazy in the comments, nothing political, nothing controversial. The post, when somebody posts something, you can say, hey, that's awesome. Congratulations, looks like fun. Where's this, looks amazing. You're awesome, kids are so cute. So excited for you. Be a friend, be positive. Heck, you can even take some of this and just copy and paste it and put it on 15 different uh, social media posts of other people. Nobody's gonna know, nobody's gonna call you out and say, oh, you posted that on Kim's page. You know, so you're just building interaction and doing it in a positive way. You can do it or have somebody do it for you. If you're just posting stuff like this, you can have an assistant go into your social media and post, looks like fun, where's this, all over the place. Wish everybody happy birthday. Facebook sends you happy birthday notifications. So wish them a happy birthday. You can type it in. I usually tag their name if I'm doing that. If it's on the weekends, they give you an, an, a notification of what, weekend, of what birthdays are coming up. Do it Friday so you don't have to mess with it over the weekends. Even better, when my assistant was doing my Facebook, she did a customized birthday cake for everybody's birthday that said, happy birthday, Charlie. Uh, on, a, on a birthday cake and we posted the picture on the wall. Uh, so, you know, interact on their birthdays. Again, this is about them. It's about your clients. It's about prospects. It's not about you. People love themselves. They love to be recognized. Del Carnegie says the most beautiful sound in the world is the sound of someone's own name. Number five, send private messages to your friends. It says once every three months minimum. Now, if you have 3,000 friends, that's going to be a lot to do by yourself, but reach out to past clients, reach out to potentials, reach out to just random people that you know. Send them a private message. Keep it light and personal. Hey, just checking in to make sure all is good. Doing fun this weekend? Hey, uh, Taste of Williamsburg is downtown this weekend. Some crazy good food down there. How are you doing? Right now, the best opportunity in this is the COVID-19 pandemic. So we can use this not in an insensitive way. You know, it, we, we are reaching out, we are connecting and doing it in a caring manner. It's building that brand, it's building that trust, it's building that relationship, but just shoot a quick message to check in. Hey, I know things are crazy for everybody right now. You doing okay? Or Hey, hope, uh, hope your friends and family are all doing well. Hope, all, hope everybody's staying safe, safe and healthy. If you ever need anything, just let me know. Don't say real estate. Just say if there's ever anything I can do for you, if you ever need anything, you know, send them best wishes, et cetera. Send messages, and right now is a great way, a great time, because people need that connection. Next, number six, if you're listing your home, Share with them the link to their single property website by private message so they can share it. Invite them to share on their page so their friends, families, coworkers, everybody sees it. Don't post it for them, it won't have the same effect. Uh, I know we all love to post listings. When we have a new listing, we love to post it so everybody we know sees it. That's not really that important. People we know already know that we're a real estate agent. Other realtors can go and find it on MLS, it's out there. What's critical is setting up that property website for them, setting up those advertisements for them and getting them to share. When you're doing your listing appointment, when you're setting up your listing, stress to them the importance of, hey, I'm gonna promote it, but you need to promote it too. So put it on your Facebook, put it on your Instagram, I will send you things to post, but that's gonna give you traction for all the folks that you know, like, and trust. And people that know, like, and trust you want to help you. So if they see that you're selling your home, they're gonna be more likely to share it and tell their friends and family. 
It boosts your sphere of influence and folks that see your listing tenfold, a hundredfold. Step number seven, join or create group pages. Uh, Jennifer Mitchell, uh, she is a real estate agent, realtor here that moved from California. Uh, she's an experienced real estate agent, has a great database, fan base, uh, is very deep in California, but just didn't have connections here. So she is creating group pages, folks that people will go to, whether it's about housing or chili cooking or whatever you are interested in or just think other people will be interested in. Uh, Bobby Jankovic is good for that. He creates pages that are informative, that are interactive, and people will know that you're a part of it. So you can go to other groups and pages daily, interact, comment, post, share stuff, be the expert right now in this pandemic, be the calm, be the light, be positive, educate, show people that, hey, times are tough, but they're going to get better. Times are tough, but real estate still goes on. We're still buying and selling. Number eight, go to Facebook Live. When you're seeing a house, when you're doing anything interesting, put it on Facebook Live. And it doesn't have to be about business. Do tips for while I was doing just like uh, life hacks. So little things that you can do in life just to make life easier. Had nothing to do with business, but I did get some traction out of that. Use and share videos. People love videos. Kids today are on TikTok all the time. It's just like little short videos and they're obsessed with it. They sit there for hours and watch these short videos. I don't get it at all. It makes no sense to me, but people love it. Uh, you know, share videos that are personal, share selfies. So, you know, that are, that are personal and talk about who you are, but again, with the purpose of connections. So think about that when you're sharing. And number 10, educate. If you're going to post about business stuff. Maybe you do it not so much as, Hey, I'm a realtor. Come use me, but you're giving information again, really important right now. People are scared. People are concerned. People aren't listing their houses because they don't think anybody's buying or selling right now. So especially on this, on your business page, fill your feed with graphs, charts, quotes. It keeps people informed, keeps them engaged, shows them that this pandemic is not slowing us down. Some realtors I know are busier than they ever have been. Most mortgage people are busier than they've ever been because rates are the lowest they've ever been in history. A great resource for this I love is keepingmatterscurrent.com. Uh, it's a real estate blog. You can share and post their stuff for free or for really cheap, like 30 bucks a month, you can join and they personalize it all for you. And they have a whole section here for free resources for real estate agents regarding COVID-19. So you can go in there and get a lot of great content, charts, information, and data to post to be that positive light. There's a lack of information. When there's a lack of information, people gravitate often towards wrong information. And when we can show, we can educate, then people will see us as that light, as that professional. All right, so we have our 10 secrets. We have our to-do list for social media. A lot of this is stuff we already know we should be doing. Hopefully this just gave you some guidance of creating a message for your Facebook page what you want to show, who you want to be, gives you some things to think about. If you have questions, you want more info about anything we've discussed, feel free to reach out to me. You can message Rita. Uh, we'll be doing other classes on marketing business development. We're going to do another one just on Instagram. So, uh, you know, Instagram is another tool. None of us probably use that anywhere near as much as we do on Facebook, but it's an opportunity because most other realtors aren't on Instagram. They're not using that. There's strategies for LinkedIn that you can use. There's a lot of good things out there. It's about finding what you like to do, what you love to do. If you like Facebook, guess what? It can be one of your best marketing tools because we all know folks who know, like, and trust us, folks we've worked with in the past are going to be a way better connection, a way better resource for us, than a Zillow lead or some other random internet lead that's probably been sold to 15 other people and it's 
Half of them have fake information. So this is a great investment of time. It can be an investment of money, it doesn't have to be, but it can be one of the most important ways to develop your business. So Rita, that's all I got today. Uh, we have any other questions, comments, anything at this point? Well, I'm going to be sending out an evaluation later today. If you don't mind filling that in and there will be a spot on there as well if you have additional questions for Kevin. And I'm sure he will be happy to get back with you. Um, I want to thank Alex again for sponsoring us, Alex with Prosper Mortgage. And I think in the chat area, she gave her phone number and uh, contact information. So if you have any questions for her, please reach out to her. And there's her card. Yep. And um, Kevin or Alex, unless you have anything else, we'll go ahead and sign off. We really appreciate everybody joining in and, and your time. Thanks, guys. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Thanks, Rita, Thanks, for Kevin. hosting us. Thank you. Thanks, Rita. Thank you. Bye. See you later. Okay. Thank you. Bye.